Hi. We're planning uh, our next trip for January uh, 2022. All fingers crossed that we'll have um, the vaccine and everybody will be traveling a bit more um, as we used to before the pandemic. Um, so very excited to have you with us today, uh, Butter, to um, tell us about your beautiful country. Um, I think we still have a few people coming in. So maybe shall we, we wait for some minutes? Okay, we can wait for a couple minutes. We have a lot of special guests with us here today. Um, I'm very happy to have some of our Omani friends who've um, joined us um, despite the great uh, time difference and hours ahead of us. So we thank you for tuning in and being here with us today. I also want to um, say thank you to um, uh, Dr. Rick Short, our former Dean in the College of Human Sciences and Humanities, who um, was so supportive in launching this trip back in 2016. Um, which we started planning, I guess, in 2015. So uh, without his help, we probably wouldn't really even be here today. So thank you for joining us, Dean Short. It's great to have you. We really appreciate it. Um, we want to also send a big thanks to the National Council on U.S.-Arab Relations, um, who do all kinds of wonderful and amazing trips. Um, I was very lucky to go to Oman for the first time in 2015. And uh, part of our faculty kind of um, responsibilities, as it were, when we returned from the trip, we were asked to do a, a number of presentations on Oman. So it kind of feels like I've never stopped doing that. It feels like since, uh, since I almost said 1900, <laughs> since 2000, um, 20, 20, since 2016, I've been doing lots and lots of programs on Oman and I um, couldn't be happier about it. So I'm glad that everyone is here with us today to learn more about this exciting program. Um, our fourth trip that we're planning now is a bit different than the previous ones because we did re receive um, a grant from uh, the State Department. So we are expanding the trip that we had done previously to focus more specifically on um, food security and environmental sustainability. So we're really excited about this trip and we're very, very pleased to have you with us today. Uh, my research assistant, um, Hannah Rodriguez, who is here, um, is going to um, put up the registration link in the chat. We do have a new online registration link um, with our Office of Education Abroad. So there's a lot more information that's posted on the website if you'd like to learn more about the trip. Of course, you can always contact us as well. Um, my uh, my email, curtis at uhcl.edu, is on the flyer, which you all received, so you can also contact me um, directly um, if you have further questions. And then at the end of the presentation, we'll certainly have a question and answer session, um, so we look forward to that. Um, Butter, did you want to go ahead and get started um, with the, the presentation? Yep. Well, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Cortez, for the, uh, for the introduction. Uh, thank you everyone for joining us uh, uh, today. I'm just trying to get the presentation ready over here. Uh, is it working? It is, yeah. So it's presenting, right? Yeah. Well, thank you everyone, everyone for uh, joining us uh, today and showing the interest in, uh, in the University of Houston Clare Lake uh, program to, uh, to Oman in, 20, uh, in January 2022, hopefully. Uh, the, the tour, basically, it will be, uh, it will be uh, slides of pictures that I took for the previous uh, uh, tours, uh, as well as activities from the previous uh, programs that we've done, uh, including some of the uh, slides will be for uh, sites that we will visit for the next trip. Uh, my clock start to count down for 30 minutes. Uh, so you may grab your drink and popcorn and let's get into it. Uh, yeah, so let's have a run, uh, quick run uh, uh, through the fact sheet of a man uh, First, 
Uh, Oman is the oldest independent uh, country in the Arab world with a history that spans for over than 7,000 years ago. And the location is one of the important things that allowed Oman to have this deep uh, 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 history, um, uh, to have a contact with the old civilizations uh, nearby the location, uh, the Indus Valley, Mesopotamia, uh, and as far as uh, to China. Oman is having a very low population, uh, almost 4.5 million, so very low density populated compared with its size, 309,500 kilometers square, which is the same size of Britain or uh, Italy. Uh, most of the revenue of Oman as an oil and gas country is from oil and gas, that's represent about 64%. Uh, the Omani flag and uh, the national emblem, which is the two cross swords with the dagger, uh, the silver dagger that is normally worn by the Omanis uh, in the middle in official occasions, as well as it's worn by the uh, officials of Oman. So it is an official uh, meeting today, and uh, I can't wear it because you won't be able to see it if I wear it in the middle. So I'm having it up, uh, up there. Uh, Is my sound still there, Maria? Because I can't see anything. Yeah, the sound in the video uh, or, or the, the PowerPoint was fine, yeah. Uh, so the PowerPoint is working? Yes. Mm -hmm. Fantastic, because everything is disappear apart from Slack. Yeah. Okay, great. Sorry for that. So I'm, I'm not seeing anything apart from the slide. So you stop me whenever you are not able to hear me. Okay. So the slides actually will be from a different locations from Oman, uh, beginning with Masqat, the capital. Uh, that's where uh, the tours normally started because of the airport. Uh, we'll have slides from Nizwa, from the Hajar mountain, which is spread for about uh, 700 kilometers, the empty quarter, Sharqiya, uh, Sharqiya Sands, Sharqiya Sands, uh, Sur, and uh, Salala, uh, which is the, cap the capital of the southern province uh, of Oman. Uh, the, the province of Masqat uh, is consists of six towns. Uh, Masqat, the old town, is one of these uh, six towns, uh, which you see it on this picture over here. The fort to the left is actually uh, built by the Portuguese when they conquered Masqat on the 1500s. And the building with the flag, which has got the blue and the and the, and the golden columns. Uh, that's the official ballast of uh, Oman. Uh, the Portuguese captured this one because it has a very, it has a natural uh, secure port. And once they rebuilt those two forts, either side of it, it was totally secure. Uh, the two forts are still used uh, by the Royal Guards of Oman, as well as a museum for the government. Uh, here's the delegation uh, in front of the official ballast when we were touring the old town of Muscat. Uh, Matrah, it's the sister town of Masqat. Uh, it has an amazing contrast of the blue water of the Sea of Oman, uh, the old buildings along the Corniche, as well as the fort to the left that I snapped the previous picture uh, from. Uh, we will be doing a city tour as well in the water of Muscat uh, to view Muscat from the sea, view the fortification, and also the arrival into the port of Muscat and the port of Matrah. Uh, as it's been seen by the sailors in the past. Matrah is also famous with its uh, market uh, that's dated back uh, uh, a long time ago. It's one of the oldest uh, markets or souks. That's the word we will use in Oman for a market, a souk. Uh, it's one of the oldest souks probably in, uh, in Arabia. Uh, the Sultan Qaboos Grand Mosque, uh, it's the famous landmark of Muscat for the construction materials they use for the construction, um, as well as for its uh, architect. Here is the group during the mosque uh, tour. Uh, and here when we were touring the main briar area, uh, to give you an idea of the size of this room, it could fit 600,000 person to pray at the same time. And the main chandelier that you would see uh, just right uh, in the center of the picture, that's about nine ton. It's one of the largest chandeliers in the world. It's steel plated by gold and it's made by Sarovsky, Austria. The carpet on the ground 
uh, they build a full factory in Iran only to make that carpet. And then 600 person have worked together for six months to wave it around those col columns inside the mosque. It's a stunning building. Another stunning landmarks of Muscat is the Opera House, which we attend uh, a brief moments uh, on it. Uh, I see, a, uh, I got a Boba uh, screen saying I'm disconnected from the internet. Is I'm disconnected or if, or I'm still okay? We're still fine. We can see the, the presentation and still hear Maria, you. Because, yeah. Great, because I'm not seeing anything apart from the slide. So I want to make sure you are there. So okay, it's the first royal, op it's the first opera built in, in Arabia uh, or in the, sorry, in the Middle East. The 40 ton stand can move backward and forward with a bush of a button uh, to be an orchestra and an opera. And if you have any questions about it, I, we got uh, uh, Abdel Majid Al Ghazali, who is actually one of the guides of the opera on the meeting today. So he will be able to answer all those questions about the opera. The ceiling can be dropped down or rised up uh, for the best sound results. I think it's the only opera even in the world where all the seats would have a have a little screen, so it will be it will be transla translated for 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 you, so you will be able to know what it's the opera about. Um, this is a general view of Muscat, and in here I would like to invite my friend uh, Yunus Ben Sahi, who used to be the head of one of the uh, headquarters of Muscat Municipality. Uh, uh, to give us uh, like a quick uh, brief or introduction about uh, about Muscat uh, in two minutes because I'm allowed only for 30 minutes. So, uh, Yunus, if you are there, please, uh, you are welcome and go ahead. You need to Hi, unmute your you. voice first, Yunus. Sure, sure. Uh, is it okay? Okay. Yes, it's okay. Uh, we all hear you. Uh, Please go on. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, everyone. And uh, thank you for having me. Uh, Muscat has been the capital of Oman since late 18th century. The governorate of Muscat, situated eastern facing east, east of Oman, facing the Sea of Oman, and it is surrounded by Al Hajar, Eastern Al Hajar Mountains and the beautiful valleys. Muscat's beautiful natural scenery is unique by the style and atmosphere of its townscape. Uh, Muscat stretched for about uh, 100 kilometers on either side. And there are restrictions in our Muscat municipality on the heights of buildings, and thus the uh, development in the city of Muscat has spread horizontally rather than vertically. Reflect the traditional architecture of Oman in balancing tradition and modernization. A city unlike any other in the world. Muscat City has been awarded many times by international organizations for being special in terms of its buildings, designs, cleanness, and environment. It is so clean and well organized to a point where we have a law to find a dirty car. I wish I have more time to talk about to talk more about Muscat and Oman. Wish you all the best and hope to see you when you visit and tell you more about my town, Muscat. Thank you, everybody. Well, thank you very much, Yunus. Uh, definitely when the group will be visiting Muscat, uh, you are more than welcome um, uh, to join us so we could learn more about uh, Muscat from you. Uh, actually, no one is better than you to learn from Muscat from your experience with uh, Muscat municipality almost for uh, three decades. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm sorry I wasn't you. able to allow you more time. Yeah, uh, thank you. When we so see ladies, them all Ladies together. and gentlemen, 
<laughs> so ladies and gentlemen, as you seen from uh, some of the pictures earlier, the main way of traveling within Oman is by road. Uh, we still do have uh, other airports that we will fly within, uh, like we would fly in Salala in the program, uh, but we don't have a train due to the low population. Uh, the road network in Oman is excellent, well maintained, and therefore when we are in Muscat, we'll be traveling by uh, bus as well as in Salala, but very much a big part of the trip uh, through the mountains and the desert will be traveling by road. The next slide, it will show us the different terrains that we are gonna drive through uh, uh, during that four by four part of the program. So as you've seen here, the road, uh, it goes through those rugged mountains all the way up to 2000 meters. Uh, we are going to drive through uh, an amazing highways like Masqat Nizwa Highway with the background of the Hajar Mountains that are rising for more than a meter. The vehicle to the left on the picture, it's one of the vehicles that we will use during the tour. We are driving also through sands in this program, uh, as well as through graded roads, uh, through uh, deep wadis like you are seeing over here, uh, and also through mountains in a very stunning uh, diverse of uh, terrains. Uh, in the picture over here, you see some of the guides actually who is going to drive you around uh, through that uh, four by four part. And actually some of them are on the meeting in here. If they would like, I, I'm not sure if you guys would be able to see their, uh, their pictures because I'm only seeing the slides, but they're welcome to say hi very quick. Uh, Musa, if you hear me, please, uh, you are welcome to say hi. Yes, thank you, Mr. Badr. I'm hearing you. Hi to everyone. I'm so happy to be, to be with you on this time. I think we are having Musa as well. Not Musa, Sami. Sami, are you there? Thank hello, you. But, hello. hello, everyone. Hi, Sami. This is, this is Sam. Hi, Ma. Hi, everyone. This is Sami. We, we I'm can't, glad to we be can't with see you. Yeah, we can because see. Because you need to active your camera. So yeah, I'm going to go on because almo almost we are 30 minutes. Uh, we go also on. include visits to the universities. Um, thank you very much, both uh, and Sami, for joining us. We also including thank visits you, to the universities. Uh, here we are visiting the Sultan Qaboos University during the campus tour. As well as in here, we are visiting uh, Sharqiya University uh, and touring the campus. Uh, we are uh, visiting the libraries of Sharqi University. Dr. Cortez here. She was trying to say something to the cameraman. Uh, uh, also in here, we are touring Bafar University. And actually the picture is in front of the library of the Bafar University. It was kind of interesting to see uh, how campuses are different in here comparing with with the campuses of the universities in, 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 in America. Um, we are having a meeting here with the Dean of the uh, College of Art and Humanities uh, in the Far University. We also include visits to many sites, uh, tourist sites and archeological sites, like this site here, which is a, a very famous archeological site that is dated back 3000 BC uh, and it's a UNESCO site. Uh, the whole economy of this city was based on frankincense, uh, and that what drive the whole entire economy of the town. Actually, where we are taking the picture is the temple of the of the city. Uh, in here, we had an interesting visit to one of the new sites discovered by the Sultan Qaboos University. So they were doing exification on the site, and it was very very interesting for everyone, including me, um, to see the process they are doing, uh, what they found. Uh, how they uh, deal with all those items they found before they process them and send them to, to the, the labs at the Sultan Qaboos University to examine them. The lady actually that was talking in here was describing her work in this tomb, which is like five meter in diameter. My first time to see a tomb or a beehive tomb this size, because normally it's much more less than that. We are visiting... Uh, 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 beehive tombs uh, during the, I think the sixth, the day number six in the program or seven uh, in the program. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm going fast. I'm trying to be with the, with the time. Uh, 
Uh, we also visit families and enjoy traditional Armani food. In here, we are having a meal at one of the local restaurants that it's well known for the traditional way of cooking the meat and the chicken and the fish over, over stones. Um, we experience uh, uh, tropical fruits. Uh, here we were trying different type of, uh, of coconuts uh, and bananas uh, from the fruit, and fruit shops down in Salala. Uh, one of the main visits actually that we concentrate on the program, it's the one to Nizwa because it's the, uh, it's the ancient capital of Oman. Here where you will be able to wander through time uh, in Oman, uh, Oman uh, uh, forts and souks. Uh, Nizwa is well known for its fort, the Sokola Tower that you see it now, that's hosted the government on the, on the 1700s, as well as its souk, which is uh, divided to many departments. Uh, the mountains that you could see on the back, that's what they call the Oman's Ophiolite, uh, which is very interesting uh, layer of volcanic rocks that NASA uh, have, uh, have done uh, uh, some studies in, in, uh, in, in these rocks with the Sultan Qaboos uh, University. Uh, another view of uh, Nizwa Fort, we have more than 500 forts and castles across the country, uh, all of them uh, uh, built out of mud. Uh, the picture from here is from an interesting, beautiful castle, which is called Jibreen Castle. Uh, these uh, rooms, which is called the moon and sun rooms, are equivalent to the Oval Office on the White House. Here, where the head of the state on the 1700 used to meet officials, um, the, 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 the windows that you see up just below the roof, it's allowing the sun uh, and the moon during light during the night. That's where it gets its name from but it's well decorated. The ceiling is a teak wood from the 1700 uh, and it's reflect what is on the, on the, on the, on the ground, which is actually the, the Bergen carpets. And the whole building is actually well, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the, the air uh, circulation system, it's worked really well inside it. it, was a very clever system because you could feel the difference on the temperature of more than five or more than 10 degrees between inside and outside during the summertime. So back to Nizwa Fort, uh, back to Nizwa Souk. Uh, Nizwa Souk, it's very famous. It has many departments. The one we are looking at now is the East Souk, which is specialized in sailing uh, spices, uh, uh, sailing dates, uh, date syrup. If you may see the guy here during the tour, you could tell him that you came with Banorama Travels, you'll get 20% discount. <laughs> so uh, Nizwa Souk, it's world famous by sailing potries that are made in Bahla, the nearby town, as well as it's famous by making and sailing the, uh, the daggers, the silver daggers. They have a very famous uh, open auction for emeralds in Friday, as well, they, as, well as they are sailing uh, ladies' silver jewel, as you see it on the pictures to the left. Fish markets are very common in most of the, in most of our, uh, souks in, 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 in Oman. Um, uh, uh, it's, is my sound okay, Maria? Yeah, the sound and, and the PowerPoint is still good. Yeah. Great. So we have, we have fish market department made in most of our towns. Um, um, fish is a big industry in Oman um, and we are self-sufficient. We export fish to many countries around the world. Uh, during the next program, we are visiting a fishing uh, farm where they are growing fish in, in cages. Um, that's one of the uh, 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 government uh, project to, provi I mean, to provide food security and also save the environment, as well as in controlling the type of fish that they are, they are allowed to fish, fish during the season. Uh, we also will be visiting a fishing port uh, where we would learn more about the ways, the traditional ways that people are using to, um, to fish, uh, like the guy you see on the picture over here. Uh, uh, the dramatic Hajar Mountains of Oman are spread for about more than 700 kilometers. Uh, we have uh, uh, Grand Canyon too, um, in those Hajar Mountains, as you see uh, on the picture here, 
uh, it's about 1.5 kilometer deep. Uh, in this harsh environment, the people uh, lived and cultivated uh, to the side of the mountains as well as in terraces to the side of the wadis at 2000 meter above sea level. And they were able to provide food security for years in a village like this one, the people will be growing pomegranates, walnuts, uh, rose waters. Uh, they would be able to grow these type of trees in this harsh environment because of the cold weather uh, in here due to the altitude of the, of the mountains. Uh, this is one of the most beautiful uh, villages that I like the most because every time I would pass um, the colors of the, what they grow on the gardens here, it will totally change because all the time uh, they will be growing different type of uh, crops. A village like this one in the past will be 100% sufficient, but nowadays uh, maybe 70%, 60% depend. But I could bet that most of those houses, they have an otilla in their, fred in their fridges right now. But in terms of like uh, onions, uh, garlic, dates, meat, uh, chicken, uh, eggs, they will be like fully self-sufficient. Um, uh, Oman has a wonderful uh, wadis or valleys. Uh, these uh, rich ecological systems uh, have supported the Omani communities for years. These wadis would have uh, pools of water, waterfalls, uh, palm dead gardens, uh, as well as uh, banana gardens and mango orchards. Uh, water from pools like this one will be diverted into a very complicated channel. So it would flow with the gravity to irrigate all of those uh, gardens. It's a very complicated system. It's needed a lot of engineering um, uh, for the water to flow with that gravity for almost sometimes more than 10 kilometers. And therefore, because of all these uh, 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 effort that it will need and also the system uh, 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 to share it uh, by the community and using all of these uh, techniques of counting the time by stars and by by the sun during the day to share the village have made five of these villages to be listed in the in the world heritage uh, sites here is the group after we have a nice walk through the gardens uh, in Wadi uh, exploring what they grow, exploring uh, also how they use the fallage and how they water their, their gardens. Uh, in this fallage, they have more than five type of dates, uh, five type of bananas they grow in here because they brought them from East Africa and from India when they were traveling uh, for trading there, as well as different type of mangoes. We are having a cyclopedia in Oman that cost the government about 25 million reals uh, about the mangoes. Um, to find the best types to keep growing them in the country. Because after date, that is the second uh, biggest production. Um, here is a picture of the group uh, in the same wadi, but from somewhere higher up. Dates, as I said, is the main uh, crop of the country. Uh, we, we grow more than 40 types of dates in Oman. During the next visit, we'll be visiting a typical date farm. It will be very interesting because the program is falling within the season of the pollination. So we will be able to see the traditional way of pollinating the palms as well as the modern process that they would use, which is pollinate them by drones. Oman, it's a desert country. 80% of the country is covered actually with sands. The empty quarter, no doubt, it's the largest sea sand desert in the world with, a, with an area of more than 6,000 650,000 square meters with the highest sandy dunes in, uh, in the world. I found this picture here is very interesting. Uh, 10 to 12 years ago, I was traveling with a Swiss group in the empty quarter desert. Uh, sort of we were trying to find a branch for their bank uh, in Oman. And the best location that we found was actually at the base of a dune where if you would look, you would be able to see the Panorama travels vehicle. And if you would consider that as a scale for that massive dune on the back of the picture, that's, ladies and gentlemen, the highest sanded dune ever in the world. And that's me at the top of it. It was a huge effort, but the view from the top was just like breathtaking. Uh, the next program uh, will include two nights uh, in, the, in the desert. So 
two nights under a dome star surrounded with golden sandy dunes. Um, you will be staying in, uh, in tents like the one on the picture uh, with an individual uh, toilet, a private toilet and shower for every unit. Um, that's how the tents looks from inside. Uh, here is uh, the group enjoying the silence and the peaceful night around the campfire. Sorry, I'm trying to go really fast to be on with the time. Uh, amazing uh, stargazing at the desert. Uh, no light pollution. Uh, you would be able even to see the satellites moving in the desert. Uh, that's how clear it is. During, during two days of the program in the desert, we will be traveling to visit Bedouin families, uh, um, uh, learn of how they were able to provide food security to sustain their life for centuries, visit camel uh, farms, uh, maybe camel races, but for sure uh, a camel, a sunset camel ride. This is the sort of the most uh, uh, high ranking activity uh, that most of the participants like uh, in our program in the desert. Uh, during the program, you will be staying in five different uh, accommodations. Uh, the, resort, the Crown Plaza Resort in Salala will be the, uh, the hotel that will crown your final stay in Oman. Um, and in here, we'll try our best. We tried our best to, to, uh, to uh, allow you more time to enjoy the resort during the morning time before we leave, as well as afternoon when we back to allow you a whole late afternoon for three days in this resort. Um, the travel magazine, uh, Condor Nest Travel Magazine have ranked the hotel, the beaches of Salala, like a month and a half ago, among the world's most beautiful beaches. Um, the, the, the trees or the coconuts that you see on the picture are native to Salala. Salala has totally a different ecosystem and a different weather comparing with the rest of Arabia because of the monsoon. So it's much more cooler during summer, uh, green mountains, uh, waterfalls, uh, uh, springs, totally different ecosystems. Hyenas and Arabian liberals are living on the mountains uh, of Salala. That's make it like the main destination or the summer, main summer destination for most of the Gulf uh, people. Uh, Sur, which is the maritime uh, town of Oman, uh, where they still, where they still, uh, where they still, uh, where they still build the the dows. Uh, the picture is actually for the port of of Sur, which is the lagoon the, uh, that was used uh, as a port in the past. The 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 watchtowers are to secure the port as well as that watchtower in there, which is. Uh, direct the ships uh, in. Still, till now, they are building those uh, wooden ships like this one in the, in the boat uh, of Sur. Uh, honestly, the, the full picture of a man cannot be completed without, uh, without its history. And mainly it's, uh, and particularly, it's the, it's the maritime history of a man in, 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 in ships that made out of, uh, or boats made out of reeds uh, with leather uh, they travel uh, uh, to make an early contact with the, with the ancient civilization. This early contact and interact have shaped the Armani nationality, uh, enrich uh, the Armani culture, which has contributed to the build of the modern, of the modern sultanate. Uh, uh, in a ship uh, like this one, ladies and gentlemen, which is the last biggest Dao built uh, in Tour, uh, the Armenians arrived into China in the 1750s. The, 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 the Chinese emperor was so impressed with these newcomers and he nicknamed one of those merchants as the general of the, of the good manners. And he made him as the, as the general governor of all those expats who are trading uh, with China. Uh, in two occasions, uh, the emperor of China have uh, appointed an Omani. This is, is telling us of how much Oman was important uh, and what a great role it's played uh, uh, in this part of the world. Uh, and still, uh, 
in the 90, in the 1975, the late uh, Sultan Qaboos uh, was the first Arab leader to uh, address a speech to the American nation from the White House when he visited his father, Sultan Saeed, Sultan Saeed bin Taymur, was the first Sultan uh, to visit America in the 1938. But our relation with our friends uh, in America dated back more than that to the 1790, when the first American ship visited the port of Muscat, followed with a, a treaty of amity and commerce um, in the 1833. And in 1844, Sultan Saeed uh, bin Sultan have sent his envoy to America to uh, in, onwards to strength that, strengthen that relation. Uh, the Omani Arab ambassador, Ahmed bin Oman al-Kabi, was the first uh, Arab Omani ambassador uh, to the U.S. who arrived in in in, in New York in uh, in April 30th, uh, 1840. Uh, the gifts that he was carrying from the president uh, 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 had made your Congress to go in three days of debate whether he is allowed to accept those gifts because they weren't allowed to allow the president to accept gifts from friends like, like Oman, while the ambassador was uh, trying hard to convince him to accept those gifts under his capacity as a president rather than his personal capacity. Uh, eventually, those gifts were accepted and, uh, and the, the Congress founded the law uh, for the US president to accept gifts from other countries, friends like Oman. This law is still valid uh, up till now. The gifts later on have been sent to the treasury uh, where they didn't know what to do with two Arabic horses. Uh, they sold them right away in an auction for $1 bell. Uh, and that showed the treasury uh, the, the need to go and find $1 bell because there weren't any at that time. Uh, the rest of the gifts, uh, especially the valuable ones like the bells, uh, sold, uh, sorry, uh, they made a gallery out of them. And that was uh, the start of the Smithsonian Institution, which has paved the way to the Smithsonian's museums in Washington, DC. Uh, those museums are, are, in my point of view, the best in the world. I enjoy them myself uh, to visit them when I visit, uh, when I visit, when I, when I visit DC. So a man, your partner and your friend for over than 250 years was the reason for all of that. Uh, in the other hand, uh, you, our friends, uh, the Americans, uh, are great travelers too. Uh, you made the most incredible journey throughout the human history uh, to put a man on the moon, not because it's easy, as President uh, Reagan said, but because it's hard. Uh, while flying in a Boeing or an Airbus uh, to set your first footprint in Muscat is much more easier than uh, riding the Saturn V to, to the moon, or probably the space uh, ship of SpaceX uh, to Mars. Uh, a man does have harsh environment too, like the moon and, and like Mars. Uh, actually, a uh, few years ago, the, 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 the space agency, the European Space Agency, they did a, a simulation of the Mars, the life in Mars, in Oman Desert, uh, a huge area in the red planet Mars have been named after the empty quarter, the harshest environment, one of the harshest environment in, in, in this planet where people have lived uh, for years and they were able to provide food security uh, uh, for centuries. Uh, in this, and still in this desert uh, nowadays, Oman government have an ambitious plans uh, to provide food security from, from, from this harsh environment. Uh, they have a, a challenging project like raising uh, Dutch cows. Uh, uh, imagine in, in, in a desert like this one, uh, to raise a Dutch cows uh, in a dairy farm that's already uh, uh, securing 80% of the Oman uh, food uh, of Oman dairy products, uh, as well as uh, plans of growing 1 million palm dates in typical farms in this desert to provide 
food for Oman and also to export it uh, to the rest of the world. This might not be as interesting as finding uh, water in Mars or a clue for a different world or a different life uh, in a different world. Uh, but Oman still can't be as interesting as, as exploring a new world, uh, as uh, 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 exploring a new, uh, uh, a new way uh, of life. And yet it's within our, our, our planet Earth. Uh, well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much uh, uh, for your time. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, and we are looking forward uh, for, to welcome you in the Sultanate, uh, those uh, who will be visiting for the first time, or uh, maybe those who will be visiting for the second time, or maybe those who are visiting for the seventh time, like Dr. Cortez, or maybe those who will be visiting for the hundredth time or the 200 times, uh, like Dr. John Duke Anthony, who is joining us today. Dr. Anthony, thank you very much uh, for joining us today. It's, uh, it's a great honor. Uh, thank you, everyone. Thank you so much, Badr. Yeah. That was a fantastic uh, presentation. You covered um, so much ground in such a period of time. So thank you um, for the beautiful presentation and for sharing all of the photographs, um, um, which you yourself took. Yeah, so you're very welcome. Um, a fantastic photographer. Well, 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 I was worried about the time and as well as the screen, it's keep freezing because all the people trying to enter the room. So yeah, I think, I think on my I'm, side- I'm glad that they weren't cut off in the internet. Everything on my side was very smooth. So um, there, yeah. I, I any interruptions or or anything like that exactly. well if if they would have any uh, questions i will be glad to answer any of those uh, questions so we have um i think about 35 people here right now so that's a great crowd um again i want to really thank our omani friends for joining us um i know that it's um nine hours ahead and that um, you're all being extra safe because of the coronavirus and that you're all at home right now. So um, wishing you all the best and, and hope that your families and friends um, are all safe and healthy. So uh, thank you so much for being here with us today. Um, uh, well, I, I think that we have quite a few people here. If people wanted to maybe put some questions for us in the chat, we can take those. Um, my research assistant, uh, Hannah Rodriguez, has just put, again, the link in the chat for how to sign up for the trip, or, or you can sign up for the trip, or also visit our website on our university's website to learn more about the trip, the costs, and, and the itinerary, and everything that we'll be doing. Uh, but if anyone has um, any questions, any comments, we're, we're happy to take them. So I saw someone in the chat ask if there would be any time that y'all would be at the beach in Oman. I didn't know if you wanted to touch on that or anything. Yeah, so our primary objective on this trip, and it is funded by the State Department, is to really focus on um, learning about food security and uh, environmental um, sustainability. So we, we will be um, visiting lots of different places with different organizations, visiting farms, uh, we will, of course, um, be seeing the beach. We'll be staying close to the beach. Uh, we will have some free time to visit the beach, um, but it is um, going to be pretty packed with lots and lots of uh, visits with people and different organizations learning about food security. Yeah. Any other questions or comments for us? Yes. Uh, John Duke Anthony. Hi, uh, Dr. Anthony, uh, welcome. We're so happy to have you here with us. Um, and it's really um, thanks to you that all of us are here in the first place. I wouldn't have had the um, wonderful experience and opportunity to learn about Oman if it weren't for you and the National Council. So thank you for everything and, and thank you so much for being here with us today. Oh, uh, this is an extraordinary uh, opportunity and experience, a uh, privilege and a pleasure. Uh, Maria, you are exhibit A of what can happen to a human being uh, who is introduced to another country. Another
Thank you, Dr. Anthony. Um, we have been uh, participating in the Model Arab League regularly since uh, 2008. And we just completed uh, the, the national level this past weekend. So we do have a, a, a team, an exciting team that's, that's kind of separate from our Oman trip, uh, but I'd be happy to talk with um, people about that um, later as well. Perhaps I can um, organize another session just on um, the Model Arab League and, and our team and what we've done. I see a couple of questions here in the chat. One was from my student, Rodney Ortiz. Thank you for being here, Rodney. You had a question for Butter. Do you want to ask him directly? Yeah, you're welcome. Rodney, yeah, there you go. You can unmute yourself. Uh, I had a question. You mentioned a uh, site, an 8,000 BC site. Where was that located in Oman? The, the, the one with the group picture. Uh, yes. Uh, there were two sides, the first one or the second one? Uh, the first one, or both of them. Well, the, the, the first one of the ancient city, that was on the south in Salala, uh, which is well known as the land of frankincense. That is dated back 3000 BC. Uh, but the second one that we were visiting with the Sultan Qaboos University, that is new. So probably the first one you would have so much information maybe in Google about it, but the second one probably you won't have any information because it's new discovered, the second one. Uh, and the second one is dated back to the Bronze Age. Oh, okay. Uh, and the, the first one was, uh, so how do you spell uh, Salala? It's, it's, it's Salala is the town, the location. The location, I'm writing it down right. I would write it. S-A-L-A. -A. I write it already down. S-A-L-A-L-A. -A -A. It's, it's, it's in the chat. Okay. Salala. Uh, thank you. So, no, the... the this is the name of the site that you got on the chat right now. Oh. And Salala, you have it right now. Okay, thank you. Don't, don't mix up. There is, there is two sites in Salala almost with a similar age. The other one is called Al Balid, which has got a museum on it. Uh, so both those towns. Um, have formed because of the frankincense in Salala, which was very valuable at that time. Uh, so there is two sites in Salala, Al Balid and Sumharam. We have visited Sumharam on the picture. Okay, thank you for yeah. your information. Yeah. You're, you're very welcome. I wonder if our Omani guests here um, have questions for us today. Well, uh, we have Musa, we have Sami. And we used to have uh, uh, Abdul Majid Al Ghazali, who left, I think, or disconnected. I don't know why. Uh, but we have we have Yunus in here. I think Musa, Sami, we have Mood as well. Are also still here. I wonder if they have any questions for us, any of the students. So I saw a question in the chat. Uh, people were wondering if they needed the COVID vaccine before they were able to travel. Um, I would say definitely. I, 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 that's a very good question. I would assume that um, at some point we're going to have more information from the, from the CDC in terms of what is required for people who are doing international travel. But just as we would get vaccinated, um, you know, before we would have gone to Oman in previous years, I, I, I would suspect that COVID would be one of the vaccinations that we would most likely have to have um, for, for everyone's safety, of course. Anyone else have any other questions? Um, is the class in the spring or in the fall? 
It's the fall. Oh, okay, but the trip is in January. Yes, that's right. Uh, January is really the best time to travel in Oman. That's um, when it's um, very comfortable. If we went in the summer, it'd be quite hot. <laughs> So uh, that we're, we're, we're taking the class in the fall to prepare and also to have a, a little bit of Arabic under our belts. Um, and we're, we've, we've done it before where we, we had it right before um, final exams. And, and um, it, it, it's a bit better to just you know complete the fall semester and to get the holiday season behind us. And there's that space between um, the new year and when the new spring semester starts. So that's when we're going to be traveling just from, from experience. That's kind of the most ideal time to travel. Uh, I'd really like to hear some questions from our students. We have about uh, 10 more minutes uh, before our session wraps up today. Um, so um, if you wanna turn your cameras on to join in the conversation, that would be great. Um, I, I just want to let you know that we have um, we ha we have a couple of uh, passport workshops that we will be organizing. We did one in the fall, but we'll do another one for people who might yet um, still need to get a passport. Um, if you're a first time traveler, if you're an, an experienced traveler, um, everyone is welcome, right? Uh, so we want to make sure that everyone knows that they're welcome. Um, there there aren't really any prerequisites for the trip. You don't have to have already traveled to many places before, um, everyone is welcome. If you have any basic questions about travel, um, the course, um, anything at all, it, now would be a great time to ask. We've got about 10 more minutes left. And thank you, Dr. Um, Rebecca Glazer for, for attending our dear colleague from University of Arkansas, Little Rock, my longtime friend from um, the Model Arab League when the faculty advisors are sitting patiently waiting to see what our students will do. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's great to see you. Uh, what did you say about the Arabic class? So um, we, we don't formally offer uh, language for credit on our campus yet. It's one thing that um, as our university is growing, we're probably going to start doing. So for the purposes of this particular trip, um, when we wrote the grant, we added in, we, we, we requested some funds to have um, an Arabic instructor assist the students and to pre prepare the students before we leave. So you wouldn't um, have, um, it's not an Arabic class per se, but we would be meeting regularly every week. It's a 15 week semester. And part of the, part of the instruction, we will have an Arabic language um, specialist built in to give us kind of an introduction to Arabic before we go on, on, on the trip. Right, shukran. Let's show it on our Thank you. Good question. So Nicholas, you are our first um, student to actually uh, apply for the for the program so far, and you're a history student. Is that correct? Uh, no, biology. Biology. Oh, sorry. Okay. Um, and you must be on campus because I see you are wearing a mask. Are you are you in the STEM building? Yes. Okay. All right. How did you learn about the trip, Nicholas? Uh, from Education Abroad hey, and Elisa. Uh, hey, good. So this trip will have uh, a focus on, uh, you know, the environment and sustainability. So hopefully there'll be plenty to interest you there as a biology student. Yeah, sounds really cool. Can't wait. Um, Gabrielle in the chat um, asked maybe like what kind of clothing they should be like worried about packing for and any social manners. I know you plan on having a, like a cultural orientation before the trip, but I just didn't know if you wanted to elaborate on that right now. Yeah, th that's a great question, uh, Gabrielle. So we will have plenty of, in addition to uh, the coursework where we will be doing more traditional and conventional um, readings and you know reading book chapters and articles and so on about um, the Gulf region. We'll also have some supplemental cultural orientation sessions as well. Um, you'll need a range of different clothing, like some trekking clothing, you know, some some comfortable clothing will be out, we'll be walking a lot, definitely some comfortable shoes. Uh, we'll probably have a couple of official meetings where we might meet ministers. 
So more formal kind of business casual attire. Um, we will hopefully, fingers crossed, get to go to um, a performance at the opera. So maybe one, one um, outfit that's a little dressier. Um, Butter is um, very kind and provides all of the um, traditional abayas for, for the students when we make a, a trip to uh, the Sultan Qaboos Mosque in Muscat. So that's a big, um, students get very excited about that. Um, so he has them all organized and pressed and cleaned. And so, um, and, and I usually bring it along as some, some supplemental things for that as well. So um, I, ha I have as well. uh, things I can say to you about that. I think I'll pause on that and save it for our um, orientation sessions, but, but that's a good question, but uh, thank you. But as well, in most of the like the previous delegation, we hold a, a pre-departure orientation like this one right now, and then uh, we share with them all those uh, pre-departure information uh, that has to do with anything from weather, electricity, luggage, uh, and dresses as well. Yeah. If, if good question, Gabriel. Yeah. Um, any other questions out there? Uh, Rodney asked about how if the video will be available on their Blackboard course. Yeah, I have been recording. So um, once we're done, I, I'll, I'll send the link. I'll post the link in our Blackboard shells so that you can, you can watch them again there as well. For sure. Thank you. Sure. Any other students have questions? When you're hey, looking to, oh, oh, sorry. sorry. Um, yeah. Hannah. Um, this is Sage Wynn. Um, do we need a visa along with a passport to enter um, Oman? There is a visa, um, which we in the past have gotten upon arrival when we're in the airport. Um, so I, I think that there might be a possibility of doing that online now. I'm not sure, but it, it costs about, um, um, I want to say 30 to $40, if I'm not mistaken. It, it's something that we get, that we've gotten just, you know, when entering uh, the airport, it, it's, it's quite easy to obtain as long as you, as long as your passport is in order. Thank you. Well, uh, can I have an addition to that? The, 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 procedure, the procedure have been changed. There is 103 uh, or almost more than 103 uh, nationalities uh, that they don't require a visa uh, to enter the country, just like an entry stamp that we would get at the airport. Uh, but that only for 10 days. Uh, and uh, as far as I know from my membership with the tourism committee, that uh, the, the, the government, uh, mainly the police, because they are in charge of the migration in Oman, they are studying broadly to uh, allow it to be for more than 10 days. Uh, if you would be visiting for 10 days, you won't require any visa. But as the trip, it will be for more than 10 days, then there is a visa required. Uh, I, will keep you, I will keep you uh, noted about that. But anyway, the visa, it's actually included on the program. So we are, we are taking care of everything uh, in your behalf. You don't need more than a valid passport of uh, more than six months uh, uh, valid before uh, the trip. Uh, Yvonne, it seemed like you were asking a question. What was your question? For the required information sessions um, that we need to attend to be considered, I guess, for this program, would this count as a required information session? Uh, yes, definitely. I think um, about, uh, I think you said that you had like 40 different types of dates and like five types of bananas. Are we gonna get to like try that kind of stuff on the trip? Well, uh, uh, the, one, the, one, the one in Salala, we could try most of them. Uh, in Salala, they would have more than 10 types of bananas. Uh, but with the bomb dates, uh, we might not be able to try them because uh, uh, they are not ribbon yet. Uh, your trip, it will be, uh, during the season of the pollination when they just start to flourish. Um, 
but you'll be able to try the different type of the dry dates uh, in the country. So Nicholas, I have to um, say yes, definitely. Um, you, you should probably bring clothes that are a bit loose because by the end of the trip, <laughs> they will likely be fitting a bit tighter. You will, you will be very, very well fed. Um, Arabs are particularly um, hospitable people um, and everywhere we go, people will be offering us coffee and dates and halwa and many other things. Um, so it's a, it's a trip about food security, but it's also a trip where we eat a lot as well. So um, we, we will probably go to at least one market, um, a, a date market, and you'll, you'll get to see all of those dates and sample, and of course shop and buy um, whatever you like. So the answer to your question is yes. Are we also gonna go out on like a boat when we do like the fish farms? We are going to take, you know, um, a sea, what is it, butter? How do you how do you say it? Like a sea tour in Muscat. Well, well, yes. So, uh, yeah. but also, also we are staying in in the hotel uh, in the Crown Plaza Resort in Salala for three days. So uh, we are by the beach. Uh, he may go snorkeling if he would like. Uh, if that's what he wants to do. Uh, and as well, um, uh, uh, if we back early, not sure about one of the visit, but we might have like a full day afternoon. So he might be able to go fishing on that day. Gabrielle, I love your questions. You are so, um, you have so much conviction about going on this trip. You've already started packing your bags. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. I, just wanna down, say, down I the line, really want to get home, even though I planned on um, joining nursing school in January. So I'm thinking now I have to push back that <laughs> because I really want to go on this trip. Yeah, you can contact us and, and we can talk about it further, but um, I'm, I'm glad to see that you're so excited about going. That makes me very happy. Yes. I, I just, I think about all the other little minute details because I want to be as prepared as possible. Those are, if I decide to go. We, I mean, it's it's normal. It's quite normal on a trip to have to think about little things like that, and and things like that on the trip come up, and we just go to pharmacies. And so far, knock on wood, um, we've not had any major medical, but any any of the small ones. Butter has always taken very good care of us, and and seen to them. And then, um, as um, university faculty, we're also aware of all kinds of medical and, and um, health needs. So we're, we're there to support those kinds of things as well. Okay, good to know y'all make accommodations for things for health reasons and. Definitely, if one person on the trip is not feeling well, it affects the whole group. So we wanna keep everyone feeling as hydrated and fed and healthy and, and, and you know, just all around well taken care of, you know, so yes. Thank you. I would really love to hear from our Omani friends. I think that we're so, um, well, personally speaking for myself, I'm, I'm so ready to travel after having not been able to travel at all. It's very exciting to see people on the other side of the world and know that you're still there. <laughs> so um, it's good to see you all. I hope that you're all doing well and, and um, wishing all the best for family and friends and, and um, hope that we make it through this pandemic period. Um, as smoothly as possible with, um, you know, we'll hopefully look back on this and just be glad that we all made it through. And it'll be just a thing in the rear view mirror. Uh, so there's a question in, in the, the chat about accommodation. So the price of $4,300 is for double uh, accommodations in the hotel room. If you're a person who really needs to have your own room uh, because that's what it takes for you to really get a good night's sleep. We can um, we can uh, work with you on that. Of course, the price would be a bit higher because um, you would just be one person in the room instead of two. But that, that's something that you can contact me about as well to get more details on. You know, a, a note of humor here. Uh, when you're thinking of uh, who uh, would be paired uh, with another person with whom they <clears throat> have never slept before, 
uh, everyone may want to bring with him earplugs so that if uh, the other person snores, yes, it's difficult to get a good night's sleep, uh, but uh, modern and even ancient technologies come up with earplugs, bring some, and uh, you might find them handy. I think that's an excellent point, um, <laughs> Dr. Anthony. We have had um, we have had some some people who were um, who who did snore, and then they they had um, earplugs, and other people had earplugs, and and then we um, also moved people around. Um, but honestly, we will be together so much um, on the trip. Um, if the idea of staying with someone seems a little bit different for you, if you've not traveled. Far or traveled much in the past, it's really amazing when you're with a group for a day or two, it feels like you've known them forever and you get very comfortable with people. Um, and we will be so busy during the day. Um, I don't think that you're going to have a hard time falling asleep at night because we will be on the move and eating and doing so much. Um, it's not hard to get a good night's sleep and the, the hotels are also quite comfortable. Um, so yeah, um, you, you get over that feeling of, oh my goodness, who is this person I'm going to be sharing a room with? You get over that really quickly, speaking from experience on that one. Uh, Gabrielle asked in the chat, um, she just wanted to make sure that it, there would be like no co-ed pairings in the hotel room if you just wanted to. Yeah, typically no. Um, we have in the past had a student or two who wanted to bring a spouse along. So of course, in that case, you know, um, they stay together. Um, but it is, um, you know, women in, you know, it, it, it's, it's not co-ed. Um, I mean, there there is, um, I mean, we, we can talk about that if, if you're, friends with someone or if it's a spouse or something, if you wanted to bring a spouse along, that's something that we could accommodate. Um, but definitely we, we would have conversations about this before, you know, kind of putting you in a room with someone that you might not be comfortable with, for sure. Um, just out of curiosity, what were, um, maybe some of the most interesting places or some of the places that seem to pique your interest from the itinerary and, and the sites that Butter showed us. Is there any, any one place in particular that you wanted to ask about before we wrap up today? Um, if there aren't any further questions, I guess um, we can uh, go ahead and, and wrap up for today, but certainly um, there, there's been lots of information in the chat. Uh, if you want to get in touch with me, if you want to um, learn more about um, Butter's uh, company, Panorama, Panorama Travel. If you want to learn more about how to actually apply for the program, I think it's all there for you. Of course, um, um, many of you are students in my classes, so you know you know very well how to get in touch with me in block order from email. Um, so I, I hope that many of you, after hearing this presentation, will consider taking part in the trip. I really appreciate your time. Um, I wanna really thank um, Butter for all that he has done. He spent, um, I, I'm not even sure how many hours going through his hundreds or thousands of uh, photographs to, to select just the right ones to show you that, you know. You're welcome. Your trip, so, um, so thank you so much, Butter, for everything that you're doing for our students. We really appreciate it. You're welcome and thank you all for joining us today, especially Dr. John Duke Antony. I'm so glad to have you today with us. So thank you very much. It's my privilege, my pleasure. Uh, I'll do this anytime. And um, it's an honor. you're a national treasure for your country. Thank and you so much. People like Yunus uh, Sahi uh, came and, and participated uh, in this. Hello, sir. Nice to see you. And uh, thank you for being part of this. Just to see you is a great experience. And Dr. Glazer, thank you for coming and joining as well. Well, thanks so much. Um, we have recorded the session and I'm happy to share it with you. Um, email me, I, I can send it on to you. 
And my email is just curtis at uhcl.edu. It's on the flyer, so you probably already have it. Thank you very much. Have a great afternoon, rest of your day, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone, Sorry. and uh, hope to see you all here in Muscat. Thank, Thank you. you for joining us. We appreciate your comments. Yeah. Right. Am I? Bye. Asalama. Asalama.